I'm Dano. I'm Dave. I'm Antonio. And I'm Gordon. And this is the Basement Roadshow AV Club. We watch things and talk about them. It's like a book club, except we don't talk about postmodernism. To celebrate the ending of the show Arrow, we have gone back to its humble beginnings, starting with the first five episodes to see just how far the show has come. <coughs> Fallen. <coughs> or that. Do you notice how hot your sister's got? Because I have not. What did he tell you, Mr. Queen? He told me I'm gonna kill you. Which one is she? The one who looks like the chick from Twilight. What's Twilight? You're so better off not knowing. <laughs> This is why it's a good idea to have a bodyguard. Then it's gonna be me. It's gonna be me. Well, you know us billionaire vigilantes. We do love our toys. So guys, what do you think about the premise of Arrow? I think it's got a, a really strong sort of introduction. It really establishes itself well. A lot of shows, especially in their first season, I think they tend to take a while to sort of get going and really set what the tone is, but Arrow kind of gets after it right away. Oliver's back, he's got the list, and he's going to shoot rich people with arrows. Yeah, something I do appreciate about the show is, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like when the show hit networks, there wasn't really anything like it as far as like the dark, gritty, like seedy underbelly of hero shows where you see, you know, somebody who's kind of fallen and they are the vigilante, if you will, as opposed to, you know, the guy coming in to save the day. You've seen some origin stories uh, like Smallville and whatnot where it's showing the, the character come up, but nothing necessarily like the character being on the darker side of vigilanteism. I would say speaking of, of Smallville, one thing that Arrow definitely differs from it would be the the pacing of the show, whereas Smallville, I think, had a very slow burn to it, whereas this one, uh, as Gordon said, it really just sort of jumps you right in and gets things started. Yeah, I think one of the things that works for it is that you establish this list of people he's kind of going after and he doesn't even really understand why in these early episodes, but it gives sort of the the villain of the week sort of mentality that you, you might find in other shows, especially other CW shows that have come out like Supernatural started this way. But it gives it like a more immediate purpose. You can definitely feel from episode one, like it's working towards something and it's moving Absolutely. very quickly, um, even with other elements starting to get introduced. I mean, in these first five episodes, we see Walter starting to get suspicious of uh, Moira and what she's doing. We see the introduction of uh, Malcolm Merlin, of John Barrowman's character. So like already like tons of moving pieces and a lot of things kind of whet the appetite and make the audience want to keep watching. I feel like kind of, again, piggybacking off of that like they also start to give us teases of other really really big dc characters really early on i mean right in the opening scene we see deathstroke's mask we see deadshot in episode three you know these are fairly popular well-established characters from different parts of the dc universe that they're bringing in for this so and uh speaking of Characters like Deathstroke and Deadshot, uh, just the the lead supporting main sort of characters that we meet, even starting in episode one. Uh, what do you guys think about those? I know a lot. Of, we have a lot of honestly really strong characters that all play sort of a vital role in this this first part of the the story. So I'll go ahead and say that you know. I would totally watch like a two or three season show just about like Diggle in Afghanistan. I would totally watch a show about Ollie's mentor, if you will, character on the island. I'd totally watch a show about him. You know, a lot of these characters that are introduced do their job very well. Um, they establish kind of who they are, their motives. They make you care about, you know, kind of just the individual characters and not necessarily about how they interact with Oliver and I think that's that's great and that puts those characters in a position that makes us not necessarily empathize, but want to know more. Yeah, totally. I think something that a lot of shows tend to struggle with in the early episodes that Arrow doesn't is just like trying to define their cast and really establish with the audience like, okay, here's what our characters are about. I think a lot of showrunners tend to 
sort of be like, okay, we have these supporting characters and they're sort of blank slates and we're just going to see what happens with them. Whereas Arrow, like right from the get-go, like you know who Tommy is from pretty much like the first episode. There's no way you don't have an idea of like, here's his archetype, here's what his motivations are, here's what he's trying to do. Uh, and the same goes to kind of all the characters. Laurel's really great. She has a lot of really good scenes early on. Even characters like Moira and Walter, like they all have their own motivations and their own personalities that really shine through really well. So let's talk about the stunt work and the action sequences in uh, in these first five areas. Uh, anything uh, that stands out that you guys want to specifically talk about? For a CW TV show, which is not like a super high budget channel or production or whatever, the choreography is significantly better than it has any right to be. Honestly, this is better stuff than some of what like Netflix ended up putting out with some of the Marvel shows. Like I'd rather watch these fights than I would watch any of the fights in Iron Fist, to be honest. Easily. Like definitely something to be proud of. And I believe they ended up winning some awards actually uh, for some of the stunt work and choreography in the first few seasons. Really too, what I like about it is they do like a lot of different stunt work. Like it's not just fights, but they're also doing parkour work. They're doing uh, other stuff with that. And it's, I mean, it's pretty well shot for the most part too. Well shot. But sometimes using a lot of cuts, which I know is something we see even in in movies nowadays, is you do a ton of cuts in order to make the stunts a little bit easier to to film rather than, you know, doing something with like a a wide angle lens and actually having a a straight shot uh, with stunts happening on it. It's much easier to do a bunch of different small shots uh, but that can, I think, at times hinder the the impact of the stunt work. Yeah, I think where the cuts really hinder the show is honestly during the the flashback sequences. When you combine it with that sort of goofy, like, shaky cam plus filter that they seem to put on everything. Oh, yeah. I feel like they do that shaky cam in the flashbacks to try to, like let us know like oh he's on an island like everything is rough everything is bad but like it's definitely kind of works to the show's detriment i feel like so the flashback sequences in the first four episodes when the camera was really shaky and and everything visually looked like you know you were sick those instances were like when oliver was you know not in a great place and kind of like once he gets a chance to collect himself a bit It's not really shaky. It's not really like that bad visually. So I think it's there to kind of show like, oh, you know, he's just in a bad place. Does anybody want to talk about Stephen Amell's narration through this show? Oh, boy, do I ever. (laughs) So I don't think Stephen Amell's a bad actor, although he's certainly grown a lot since this first aired. But... (sighs) I don't know if it was like the director or someone just said, you're not allowed to inflict any emotion or personality into this narration at all. You just have to read the lines in as wooden a way as possible to convey what's going on here. And it's just, it's just bad. It doesn't add anything to the story. It doesn't sound particularly good. It sounds like something that was come up with after the fact and recorded after the fact, and it just doesn't work at all. And I'm glad that it's something that mostly, spoiler alert, disappears from later seasons. And uh, any comments in regards to, I mean, this, this show has a lot of action sequences and in those sorts of things, you get a lot of sound effects, uh, you know, a lot of Foley work of things smacking into each other. Any comments regarding the different sound effects that uh, the show Arrow uses in its fights? So I just have a brief thought on that. I mean, you do see in episode three and four, I believe, Oliver gets into a melee battle with his bow as a weapon. First off, who brings a bow to a knife fight? But just the really bamboo-y sound, I guess. It sounds like, you know, something you hear in like a Japanese sixth grade kendo class. Just two bamboo swords thwacking against another. And I don't think that's the sound that really should be played there. Yeah, I would agree. And also the sound effects, whenever he he draws his bow and like knocks an arrow and then fires, they're all just very over the top and exaggerated and don't sound real. He can't help you. 
I feel like they're also really loud in the sound mix. So that's what we thought about the first five episodes of Arrow. Join us next time. We'll be talking about episodes six through ten. I'm Dano. I'm Dave. I'm Antonio. And I'm Gordon. And this has been the Basement Roadshow AV Club. Okay, but seriously, I just want to talk about something real quick. Does no one in this entire ass show know how the fucking law works? Like, even Laurel says in episode four, I didn't become a lawyer to break the law. But seriously, every fucking episode, she breaks the law. Just Fourth Amendment rights just being trampled on every single episode. Illegal seizures, uh, illegal confessions, uh, confessions under duress, uh, even just illegal, like, on that train scene where uh, Oliver gets the evidence from that guy even that's just illegal as shit because there's no warrant involved at one point laurel's like oh wait a polygraph's not invisible in court bitch everything that you've done in the show is not admissible in court because you got that shit so fucking illegally and just no one says anything about it because no one even the lawyer hasn't gone to fucking law school but she looks good doing it (laughs) 